Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean. Today's case is going to demonstrate how to replace the lower missing lateral. You can see here the space is very limited from mesial distal point. It's too narrow for an implant right now. We can also see from a buccal lingual aspect on the cross-sectional view of CT scan that there's not enough space for even a 3.5 would be pushing it. So we decided we're going to use a 3.0 millimeter implant. But first we decided to do a little bit of orthodontics to get some space back. So we did some interproximal stripping, some open coil and C-chain. And this enabled us to get the space required to place the implant. Once the space was adequate, it was time to do the implant surgery. So here we had to take the wire out of the carrier bracket system. So you just pop the windows of the brackets up and then remove the wire. And then we'll work around the orthodontics. Due to the orthodontics, we chose not to use a surgical guide, but we used a precision drill and the position of the root plus the angle of the bone to place this implant. Now what I'm doing is keeping my finger on the buccal bone and watching exactly. So the precision drill will take us to the target so it's very precise where it's going to penetrate the ridge. My main focus is to be making sure that everything is going in at the proper angulation. We're going to then switch to the 1.5 millimeter twist drill, which will be the first drill in for the no black to 3.0 millimeter implant. You can actually use the tactile feel to sense the lingual plate. This will enable you to keep on target. We're going to then use the 2.0 millimeter twist drill. This drill will follow the exact uh, position of the 1.5 millimeter drill. And we're not going to full length at this moment, but we're actually just going to take these drills in so that we can then take an x-ray with a directional indicator to check to make sure that we're on target. An x-ray is usually a good idea just to check your angulation from a mesial distal point of view. And then visually you can see with the directional guide that we're on target. We're going to rotate this this slightly distally. I like to make some papilla by doing a semi-lunar incision through that initial access hole. But we really do not want to do a punch technique in this area. We want to preserve the papilla as much as possible and bring this tissue forward so we can later lift it up with some uh, suturing techniques. Since we had a look with the CT scan, we don't have to pull this tissue all the way back and kind of preserve the blood supply. And this makes it a lot better for the patient. So we're using a paddle drill first just to follow that initial drill. This bone is of medium quality, so we're going to use the 2 millimeter twist drill to length, and not go to the 2.4 to 2.8 millimeter twist drill. And this is based on the assessment of the bone at the time of surgery by the surgeon. According to the manufacturer of the 3.0 noble actin implant, it's only indicated in three tooth positions. First, the upper lateral incisor position, and then also the lower central and lateral tooth positions. And this is only applied in a single tooth application. The maximum torque for the implant is 45 newton centimeters at the surgical time of placement, and then for prosthetics, it's 15 newton centimeters for screws. For today's case, we're going to be placing a no black to 3.0, 10 millimeter long implant. And this implant is uh, perfect for the size that we're going to be placing it because we have a thin ridge. We don't want to start to get into angulations and getting it too close at the apex. So as we place this implant, we're using a surgical driver, which you have to be careful not to generate too much force. Now we're going to make sure that the maximum surgical torque is 45 newton centimeters. The goal is to have the target of the torque between 35 to 45 newton centimeters. So if we can get above 35, then we're able to do immediate temporization. So here you can see we've reached our target of 45 newton centimeters. There are some design features of the Noble Acta 3.0 that make it a great implant for immediate temporization. For example, it has a tinite roughened body with a variable pitch groovy thread going from a square thread at one end to a very kind of sharp cutting thread at the other which enables the implant to go in and then cut on the end and then widen out to give this excellent stability that's needed for temporization. The implant does have the 0.25 millimeter smooth platform shift which makes the soft tissues seal this area Then has an internal hex which stops rotational of the abutment and then finally it has a conical seal as you see here in number one which seals off this area from bacteria and makes a nice tight connection. 
you can see that the implant is in a good position for long-term stability here. And the implant is this slightly subcrestal, which is going to enable us to have some soft tissues kind of rebounding. You can see the bone actually rebounding over top of the smooth 0.25 millimeter collar. So I'd like to demonstrate the 10 minute implant temporary. And this is a very easy procedure that you can do. Once you have 35 Newton centimeters, then you're able to screw on this immediate temporary abutment, which I'll call the ITA. And this ITA can be carried by the multi-unit driver, which is found in the prosthetic kit. And take it out of your um, long wrench and just use your fingers to kind of tighten this down. It's the easiest way. Then come back and tighten it to 15 Newton centimeters, as recommended by the manufacturer. Once it's been tightened down, then it's important to make sure that the clearance is adequate because you can cut these back a little bit, but most times they're in the right position. So we check to make sure that there's enough room for the temporary. And now most of our fabrication is going to be do, done out of the mouth on a replica with a second ITA as a handle. This is a great way you can take the plastic cap, place it on this little handle, and start to do some work outside of the mouth so that you're keeping the free resin out of the surgical area. So you roughen the cap a little bit and then take this uh, with the drill and then take this back and you're going to add some Luxatemp resin or some foldable resin that you're going to use for temporization. So we'll kind of add it and shape it like a bullet. And this bullet shape is going to be able to, it doesn't matter what reference point you have right now, you're just going to kind of add some resin so you can go to the mouth and place this on and then start to pick up some contacts of the adjacent teeth. And this will tell you the shape that you're going to need to make your temporary because you'll have the contacts themselves, plus you'll have how the emergence profile of the temporary crown is going to be down to the margin of where the abutment is. So this allows you to make some final contouring. It may bulk it out on the buckle, just to kind of hold the tissues. But this is going to create a customized temporary that's going to enable us to suture the gingiva back against this temporary create a nicer aesthetic result. So when you're placing this on, this is very important, use a very, very little bit of tampon, just enough to be on the tip of your explorer. So you take this to the mouth and you want to make sure it's fully seated. We'll leave the brackets on over healing just in case we want to move the centrals over to make them all the same size. But now we're going to focus on suturing the tissues and, and uh, tissues are going to be kind of brought up around the temporary. To do this, you pass through the lingual tissue first and then come back into the buckle. You're going to kind of pass it down a little bit lower than normally you would, like down here. And then pass it directly back through again, down low. And this will kind of pull the tissue up against the temporary. We don't have a real good vision of it here, but you'll be able to see at the last photograph of how this kind of pulls the tissue up. And so you kind of suture it on the back. And this suture will have to be taken out. It is a cytoplast suture. One of the most important steps and the key to success is having a non-functional loaded temporary crown. If we don't have this hitting in protrusive, lateral working, non-working interferences are all removed. So that we enable this to be hit by the bolus of food, which is perfectly fine, but the occlusion and particularly parafunctional forces are removed. So here we've got this beautiful crown. The patient's going to come back in about three months. We'll take it off and then we'll make a final prosthesis and then the patient will be doing great.